everyone, my name is Ali Gooch and welcome to my kitchen. I am going to be making kombucha today and if you have never heard of kombucha, kombucha is a fermented tea drink made from black or green tea and sugar and a colony of bacteria, as appetizing as that sounds, is what is responsible for initiating the fermentation process. Once kombucha has fermented, Oh, by the way, I do have Miss Emerson here in her high chair eating some puffs, so if you hear some background noise, that is what that is. <laughs> um, so like I said, once kombucha is fermented, it becomes slightly carbonated. It contains vinegar, B vitamins, enzymes, and probiotics. And kombucha is so good for you. It is said that kombucha improves the digestive system, cleanses and detoxes the body, is good for immune support and reduces joint pain. So lots of good things going on there, but for me personally, the biggest thing is gut health because I believe that health really does start with the gut. So if we're taking care of our gut, then hopefully the rest of our body will follow suit and be healthy as well. So I don't want you to be scared by this process. I was definitely a little freaked out at first because it can be a little, a little creepy. Um, but once I learned how the process goes of how it's made, what's in it, and just how good it is for you, I set aside my worries and my fears and I totally embrace kombucha now. So I hope that you can do the same and I hope that you really like this video. So let's get started. Alright, so this is my batch of kombucha. It has been fermented in a dark cupboard for 10 days and I tasted it at 10 days. You're supposed to brew it between seven and 14 days. So at seven days, at day seven, I will taste it. And if it is the taste that I prefer, I like it to be more on the tangy side than the sweet side. So if it's too sweet at day seven, which it usually is for me, then I'll let it continue to ferment. And every couple days, I'll taste it until it's where I want. So at day 10, is the tankiness that I prefer. So this has been going fermenting for 10 days and it is ready to be bottled for stage two. And you don't have to do stage two, but I like it because at stage two, that is when you will add fruit and a little bit more sugar to the individual bottles that you place this in and you let it set between three and five more days and that is where you'll get a fruity flavor and a bit more carbonation which I find very appealing. So that is what I'm going to do with this. This is perfectly fine and healthy to drink as it is but I like to take it a step further and I'll show you how I do that. So this is the kombucha that has been brewing for 10 days. This is the SCOBY floating on top and that is perfectly normal and it is healthy and it looks good. This SCOBY is what is responsible for the fermentation process. It is the starter and it's really cool because it grows a new layer with each batch and then once it gets to a certain thickness, this still isn't as thick as I will want it, but eventually it'll just keep growing and growing and you'll want to separate those layers and you can either give that SCOBY half to a friend for them to start their own SCOBY or you can throw it away or you can feed it to your chickens. This is what a healthy batch of kombucha looks like. I just cover it with a towel so that the kombucha can breathe and then I put either a rubber band or some twine around the top just to keep any bugs out. Also, there's Miss Emmy. <laughs> Say hi. Hey. <laughs> All right, so we are going to start by making the tea, the tea base. I'm going to just use a large pot and you fill that pot with three quarts of water. So there's two quarts. And there is three quarts. And you want to bring this to a rolling boil. So I turn it on high and I'm going to let it sit until it is a rolling boil. All right, I have Emmy with me now. She has joined me because she won't let me put her down. So 
I'm going to keep her far away from the hot water and the hot stove and see if I can do this. Um, but we now have a rolling boil. It's really important to get your water to a rolling boil to sterilize the water and make it completely clean. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off the stove and I'm going to add one cup of sugar. And I like to use raw organic sugar. So I've got one, two, three, which makes one cup. And then I'm going to go ahead and stir that completely so it disintegrates into the water or dissolves into the water. And I'm going to use a plastic spoon. You can use plastic or wooden, but I do not recommend metal. So go ahead and give that a good stir. Get all of that sugar dissolved into that hot boiling water. And then go ahead and add your tea bags. I have two large iced tea bags. It's just plain black Lipton tea. Go ahead and set those in. Thanks for your help, Emmy. And then I'm going to use two small Earl Grey bags. I'm experimenting with my flavors on tea in tea here, and so um, I initially used Earl Grey for my first batch, and I really liked it. And then I went just to plain black Lipton tea, and I haven't really liked the flavor as much, so I'm kind of experimenting here with the flavors. This time I'm going to use two Earl Grey um, tea bags and then two regular Lipton tea bags and see how I like that flavor. So you're going to take this off of the stove to a place where it can cool completely and from there we are going to go ahead and get started with our batch. <laughs> okay so I just washed my hands with soap and water really really good and then I like to rinse my hands with vinegar. The vinegar kills any bacteria that might be on my fingers or under my fingernails. But then I rinse my hands again with clean water to remove the vinegar so that the vinegar doesn't kill any of the kombucha bacteria, which we want. So complicated, I know, but you want clean hands because next step, we're gonna touch this goby. All right, so what you need to do is get a plastic spoon and take about three quarters of a cup of the kombucha liquid and put it into another large clean container. This is going to be pretty much our starter for the next batch of kombucha and it's also where we're going to keep our SCOBY. The SCOBY always needs to be in kombucha liquid. So that is about three quarters of a cup to one cup of the kombucha liquid. Now's the fun part. Reach in with your hands and pull that SCOBY out. This SCOBY is from three uh, batches worth. So there we go. This is a healthy SCOBY. So this is what it looks like. Super weird. And soon I'll be able to separate these layers and have two different SCOBYs. Isn't that awesome? Okay, but for now I'm going to place this SCOBY into my reserve kombucha liquid. Now this is the kombucha that we're going to be drinking and so I'm going to be placing it in my mason jars. So you can go ahead and set aside your SCOBY and the reserved kombucha liquid will be coming back to that. So now I have six mason jars, five small ones and then a large one. It doesn't matter what kind of bottles you put them in as long as they have a lid that's going to seal. Um, so I went ahead and I ran these mason jars through the dishwasher to sanitize them, to disinfect them so that they are clean. So now what we're going to do, this is the tricky part, a funnel would probably be a good idea if I had one, but I don't, so <laughs> here we go. Just go ahead and pour the kombucha liquid into your jars. Take this 
remove the jar, I need to wash it up completely because we are going to be making another batch. This is so cool because you always will have a batch of kombucha brewing. in their jars. We are working on step two of the fermentation process which includes a little bit more sugar to be added and a fruit of your liking. So I generally just use what I have in my fridge which happens to be a Fuji apple and some strawberries. I've done it with raspberries, blackberries, ginger is a really great addition. Whatever kind of fruit that you like, go ahead and put that in your kombucha to create your own flavors. So that's what we're going to do right now. I'm going to go ahead and cut up some slices of apple and some chunks of strawberry and add some sugar to our kombucha to start phase two of the fermentation process. one teaspoon of additional sugar and then a slice or two of apple and a hunk or two of strawberry and that is it. So these are a super cool alternative to um, those metal lids and I really like them. So now stage two of the fermentation process has begun. I will let these sit in a dark, warm place. I use a cover for three to five days. I'll take, take the lid off and test it at day three. And if it has the carbonation that I'm looking for, I usually tend to go to day five because I like carbonation. But once you have reached the carbonation level that you desire, you're going to want to put these bad boys in the fridge because if you let them continue to ferment, then you're gonna be having yourself a good time drinking an alcoholic beverage. So if that's your jam, go for it. But um, I don't want that, I just want this for the healthy gut purposes. So I will then place them in the fridge which will stop all fermentation processes from proceeding. Next I'm going to be showing you how to get another batch of kombucha started. So we already have our tea that has been brewed. We, it's basically sweet tea. Actually it is sweet tea. It has sugar and tea seeping in water. So I've let it cool to room temperature. It is ready for me now to add the SCOBY and the starter liquid and it's as simple as that. So let's do that. So go ahead and remove your tea bags out of the liquid. I 
and you can discard them. Now take your clean jar and pour the cooled tea into the jar. Go ahead and wash your hands again because we are going to be touching the SCOBY. Take your SCOBY and your starter liquid and you can go ahead and pour the starter liquid into your fresh batch of tea. Then take your SCOBY and find the top side and lay it in. So here we have it. This is a fresh batch of tea with the SCOBY placed in it and the starter liquid. Then take a clean towel, place it over the top and grab a rubber band or a piece of twine and tie that around. to keep out any unwanted guests or visitors in our kombucha. There we go. It's ready to go in the cupboard and brew for seven to 14 days. And there we go, guys. We have made kombucha. I showed you how to turn a first batch into the second fermentation process with the fruit and the little extra sugar that's going to give it a little bit more carbonation. And then we already flipped our batch into a second batch of kombucha so that we can have a continuous supply on hand. I hope that you guys really enjoyed this video. I know kombucha is kind of a weird thing, but I wanted to just share it with you and maybe open your eyes a little bit to this world of gut health and kind of a, a freaky drink. Um, I don't know, it's fun. I enjoy making it, I enjoy drinking it, and I love the fact that I am doing a favor for myself. Also, kombucha can be pretty pricey. It can be between three to five dollars in the grocery store per bottle. So if you can make it yourself at home, you're really going to be saving yourselves some bucks because honestly, you have sugar on hand usually. Um, you usually have tea on hand and the SCOBY, you can get it free from a friend um, and it continuously reproduces itself. So like, in essence, Kombucha can be pretty much free if you make it at home. I just feel so like hippie earth woman making my own kombucha, jarring my own kombucha. So thank you guys for watching this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see some more videos from me. And let me know in the comments if you thought this was weird, if you are going to try it yourself. I don't know. Let me know what you think in the comments. I would love to hear from you. I love you guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.